So we all know the basic do's and don'ts of resume writing, but Mitch, what are some of the less obvious tips our students should know? You know, it's actually surprising, Alicia. There are so many little pieces of your resume that can make or break you, especially if the person reading that resume has a bias or some preconceived notion of what kind of employee they're after. In fact, we don't even have to look past the first few lines of a resume to find some talking points. Sounds interesting. Do tell. Well, for instance, we all want to look as professional as possible on our resumes, right? So let's consider email addresses. Many people have very casual, almost colloquial addresses like princesshotty77 at hotmail.com. Well, if I'm an employer who, for whatever reason, is biased in thinking that older employees are always the most experienced, I could look at that address and make the assumption that the 77 is the year this applicant was born, which makes her about 35 years old right now. So it's possible that this employer might pass on that applicant simply because she seems younger than what the employer imagines. An employer shouldn't be doing that, right? No, of course not nor would they admit to it. But there's no getting around the fact that we're all human and it's not uncommon to have preconceived notions or biases about who you want to hire. It's for that same reason that this applicant should think about whether her email address might be too informal. The words Princess Hottie in there are pretty harmless, but who knows? Maybe that causes the employer to make assumptions about this applicant's character or her level of professionalism. And if she's applying to a job in the technology field or in marketing or design, she might earn some brownie points by having a more personalized, cutting-edge dress that shows she's aware of trends on the web and personal branding. You mean like getting just her name at gmail.com or using her Facebook mail address? Exactly. Something that is simple, professional, something you'd be proud to put on a business card to represent your value to a company. She could even buy hername.com and use email from there if she wanted to really be savvy. I can see how this opens up a whole can of worms when you think about it. Even your phone number could be saying something about you that you don't expect it to. Oh, definitely. I mean, if an employer is biased towards hiring locally, for instance, not hiring someone who lives outside in the suburbs under the assumption that they'd be less inclined to stay late at work, then think about what your address and phone number are really saying. A phone number with a rural area code might lose you points, whereas a city area code might score points. If your cell phone number's area code can hide details about where you live, consider using it. Same thing with address. While some employers request a full mailing address, it's becoming less prominent all the time, and you should consider whether or not it's beneficial to provide your full address. People make assumptions about certain areas of any city, and it would be unfair to you as an applicant to be at a disadvantage just because your house is far from the office, or the employer thinks you live in a low-income area and will therefore have lower salary requirements. Wow, I honestly never thought about that. There's obviously a lot more that goes into putting your best foot forward that most people are aware of. For sure and our career services department can be a big help there because it's really tough to stay on top of all this while you're job hunting. Cool. Thanks, Mitch. And if any of our viewers have some tips or questions they want to share, go ahead and leave a comment for us.